Hello and welcome back to Adventure All The Way. I'm Emma and I'm a mum of three from the UK and I just wanted to do a little adoption update video. Um, Wednesdays are our adoption video day and I haven't got any huge updates at the moment. Um, obviously our last video was our stage one paperwork. Oh, excuse me. But I went through with you and told you all of the things I was filling in. Um, that's all gone in now, um, I put that in uh, a couple of weeks ago and they've now sent out our references, um, uh, the reference forms to our references, um, my parents, Phil's parents, our siblings, um, uh, the friends that we chose and our, and Phil's employer and my, um, I'm, a as I'm a rainbow leader so my kind of leader in charge has had a reference as well. Um, to fill in and I think quite a few of them have sent them back I don't know how many people have sent them back I know my parents have because I had to help them email it back to them um, and a and two of our friends have sent them back and my rainbow leader has sent them back has sent it back I don't know about anyone else um, I don't want to like nag them but I also want to be like have you sent it back yet like I, my, one of my friends sent it to me to read which was really really lovely um, it was it, like it was a beautiful reference and I was like oh my god is that what you think about us? And uh, she was like, yeah, that's how I am. <sighs> like, you know, ugly snotty cry afterwards because it was really lovely. Um, so yeah, references, they've been, they have to be in apparently by Friday, I believe. So today is, oh, Ednet's day. So they've got two days. If they haven't already done them, two days. Um, so yeah. I do want to message them and be like, so did you get it done? <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's that. And then we've sent off our DBS checks. That's been done. Um, what else? What else? DBS references. Uh, yeah, references, DBS. What else? I think that's it. I think that's it right now. So references and DBS, they have been done. Um, we're waiting for our DBS to come back. Oh, medicals. Waiting for our DBS to come back. It's been like almost two weeks now. Apparently they are taking about two weeks at the moment because of COVID. So I'm not, and I'm not worried. Both Phil and I have current ones and we know there's nothing on them. Um, oh gosh, here we go. Oh. Um, medicals. Phil has had his medical. Um, we were pleasantly surprised because we were told we were going to have to pay for them. Originally, we were told you're going to have to pay for them and they're going to be £85. Um, then our agency said that they were going to pay some money towards it. They were told they, they were going to be paying 73.86, very specific um, amount towards it, that amount towards it. And then we were told anything else, the doctors will have to, I don't know why I'm waving Bongellary, um, will have to invoice us separately. They have not done that. So I'm guessing the doctor was like, yeah, 73 quid, that's fine. Um, and mine is in a week's time, which is quite, I'm quite excited, also a bit nervous. The per the doctor that's doing it is a doctor I really, really like. And he actually did my six week checks with all three of the kids. Um, like just coincidentally, I got the same doctor for each of the six week checks, for all of the six week checks, like two years apart and then three years later. Um, so I'm actually really excited that it's um, that it's him because he's a really sweet guy. Uh, he's an older guy, like old school, lovely old doctor, like my older than my dad, just because he's a nice man and um, I'm looking forward to getting it done. I imagine we will talk about mental health mostly because I have had anxiety and um, I had postnatal depression with my first pregnancy and have had anxiety and have had treatment for anxiety and things like that. Um, actually, and he was the doctor who gave me my anxiety medication a little while ago, um, back when my grandmother was first diagnosed, so a year ago, um, just over a year ago. Um, yeah, so um, it'll be interesting to talk to him about that and be like, yeah, I'm fine, actually, thanks. Um, and uh, yeah, so that'll be, that'll be good to know. Um, yeah, there's nothing else really at the moment. I, uh, the, the house is kind of an ongoing thing, like just trying to declutter stuff, um, and keep it like a, at a level that I would be okay with a social worker coming in, just so 
we get into that habit of making sure things are done and i have this i have this thing like i'll do a massive deep clean of the house it'll look absolutely spotless and i'll be so happy about it and then the next day i'll be like yeah it's got a bit messy but it's fine i'll just leave it and then and the next day i'll go yeah it's not too bad and then like a week later i'm like good lord what happened to this house it looks like you know someone robbed us um so what i need to get into the habit of doing is after we've done that big clean of the house doing those little tiny bits um and uh, excuse me doing those little tiny bits to like oh mm, yeah i could leave that but not leaving it so then it doesn't build up and then i don't have to deep clean the house all the time and um, so that's one of the things i need to do because it will help me in the future and then it's just keeping things going the only room um the only two places that are like problem areas right now that really need to be dealt with um because at some point in the next few weeks, I imagine the social worker, our social worker, um, we'll call her V, um, because that's the first initial of her name, um, is going to come and visit us and have a meeting with us. And I don't really know what the meeting's about. I'm guessing she's going to talk about the forms that we filled in and just have a brief chat um, about them, maybe. Maybe talk about our references. I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe she's just coming to say hi. Maybe I think maybe it's like she's going to do the home safety check at that time as well. Um, to see if there's anything that she feels we need to do in the house before a child joins us. Um, so, yeah, I need to get on that. Like, that needs to be a thing that needs to be done. Um, seeing as the references have to be in, like, by Friday, I'm guessing it's probably going to be after that. Like, she'll, once all the references are in and she's had a look through them, she'll come out and chat to us. So hopefully they're all positive, I hope. I don't think anyone's gonna like try and sabotage it of the people who have our references like they're all really excited um I think <laughs> um or they're indifferent <laughs> there's like there's no one who's like oh my god you should be doing this I don't think at least they haven't said so they haven't said what the hell are you doing um about it so and to be fair we've been going on it about it for the last two years so they can hardly be surprised and why the home ed video was today and not Monday and why um just like there's been no friday video and to be honest i'm not even sure if i'm going to bring a friday video in at the moment just because adoption video and home ed video is enough for me at the moment um and a week ago we lost one of our ponies uh her name was chanty and uh, she was a shetland pony you some of you may remember from my instagram and maybe on here i don't know if i shared it but we um got her a year ago we had her when she was a youngster she was in our care when she was a youngster when she was uh, almost two and then she went to a new home when um probably about two and a half years later she went to a new home after we'd backed her as a leader in pony for charles um I just couldn't keep up with two kids and a pony. It was just mad. So um, we um, we saw we like she moved on to a new home, and then um, when Obi died last year, our cob that we had last year, um, he uh, she happened to be being re needing to be rehomed um, by the people that she'd gone to live with because they couldn't keep keep look keep her anymore. So she came to live with us again, which was lovely. Um, and she'd remembered everything and was starting to be ridden again. It was great. She had the winter off. And then in the spring, she got really, really sick. Both Lola, my other pony, and her got really, really sick with the same problem. And, um, and they had major abdominal surgery. Lola was fine and has continued to be fine. Chanty was fine. And then she wasn't. Um... She was developing the same symptoms again, but it was worse. She was in way more pain. She was having pain medication. She, she, the vets came out, two different vets came out, and one day they gave her pain medication and then sedated her, and she just was not getting better. So she was rushed to hospital in the equivalent of a horse ambulance, which is just a horse lorry, a horse transport company who do emergency call-outs, and they, um, they rushed her to an equine hospital about an hour away from our paddocks. Um, and she was there from about midday until about midnight and um, about seven o'clock that night um, I got a call from the vet saying look um, surgery is not an option because um, there wasn't enough money left on her insurance anyway and um, she, she, she was like medically I don't recommend it I don't think it will help us know what's happening but I don't advise putting her through that I don't think it's fair and I don't think it's going to solve anything, I think. 
we would be operating on her to like she might not wake up from the surgery we would find that we wouldn't be able to do anything like the recovery is going to be harder like it's just not a good choice um, so um i and she the vet said i only like to sedate them three times she's just been sedated for the third time if when the sedation wears off she is not better you are going to have to make a call either you go against veterinary advice and you try and go for surgery or you put her to sleep and surgery just wasn't an option for me i had already decided after she'd had the operation the first time that if it came to the point where um she was gonna have to have surgery again i would just say no just put her to sleep because i just didn't feel like it was fair to make her to go through that again um just turn the light on I'm not sure if that'll help. oh no ah <laughs> sorry <laughs> um that just freaked me out the fact that i was green for a minute um yeah so she um at like half past seven in the evening and I was in the bath at the time when they rang me and I called for upstairs and I kind of went nuts at him like I wasn't yelling at him I was just yelling and he was there accepting it um I cried and I yelled and I was just really angry and really hurt and just like just sad just really sad because I was about to lose she was my first pony my first ever pony and she was rehomed and then she came home again and now I was gonna lose her and it was awful it was just awful I just felt absolutely awful um there was nothing i could do and i was gonna i just knew that that was i knew i was gonna lose her i knew i'd known in the morning when we'd have called the first bet out i was like i don't think she's gonna come back from this this is it and um then the second vet came out and i said i think we're gonna send her to hospital and they're gonna try and save her and they're gonna it's just prolonging the inevitable and the vet said yeah potentially which was rubbish to be proved right <laughs> i like i hate it when my gut feelings are proved right about bad things so um i then kind of went into adrenaline mode autopilot mama mode and i said i have to be with her if at 10 o'clock i have to say goodbye to her i have to be with her when i say when when she leaves this world and goes to the next I have to be with her I have to be touching her I have to be talking to her I cannot not be with her I feel like we owe our animals we owe it to them to be with them at the end that's my personal opinion and um, I try very hard to be with all of my animals at the end or at least have somebody else there so for example when Obi died um, Phil was with him because he had a greater affinity with Phil um, so it was important for me to be with Chanti so we were like, okay, it's the kids' bedtime right now. We have three options. We can either try and find a hotel nearby. We can go up to the hotel. We can then go to the hospital. At, I can go to the hospital at 10 o'clock. The kids can be asleep in the hotel with Phil. I can go to the hospital. I can say goodbye. I can compose myself and I can come home. Second option is that um, we just drive up to the hospital and um, like we leave at nine. We would get there for 10 they would be like, we've got to make the call or we don't have to make the call and either I get to see my pony and kiss her goodnight and say I'll pick you up tomorrow or um, I say goodbye to her and I'm with her. That was option two. Option three was a course that we just didn't go and that didn't feel like an option for me. And um, so we hurried around. We called my sister-in-law and said, um, can, uh, can you look after the dog? Because we don't know when we're going to be back. And she was like, yep bring her over that's great um i we looked for airbnbs we looked for premier inns we looked for travel lodges we looked for everything and there was nothing that wasn't that was a close area that would take five of us that was affordable um that uh you know yeah that was just gonna work we had to find i had to find something and i was like if the kids if the kids are asleep in the car we're gonna leave at nine o'clock it's not a hugely late night for them to be fair like it is for one of them but not for another two for the other two so like they sleep in the car they've slept in the car before on long journeys when we've like like visited phil's um brother in he lives um in birmingham like we they we would leave late and they sleep in the car and then we transfer them into the house like it's not the worst thing that ever happens to them in their life that you everyone falls asleep in the car and then goes into the house and go back to bed like it won't we won't be at the hospital long and then we'll be home by you know we'd probably be home by midnight and again it's not the latest night they've ever had so 
yeah, um, we, uh, we just were like, okay, let's just pack an overnight bag. And I just threw stuff, toothpaste, toiletries, medicines that we need, um, that, that we take every day and spare changes of clothes, pajamas, pants, and that kind of thing. Just threw them into a suitcase that conveniently had not been put back in the loft yet from when we were away. Um, when we were really last, um, it was just in the nursery actually. So I was like, ha 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 managed to find a holiday inn that was um six miles away from the hospital from the equine hospital and um for a reasonably decent price as well didn't include breakfast or anything like that but we were like it's fine we'll just get a mac and cheese on the way home um which we did and uh, we got to the hospital and they were like and we were no we were on the way to the hotel sorry we got up to got up to the area where the hospital is and we were 10 minutes away from the hotel to check in and they rang me and they said I've just had to sedate her for a fourth time because she is in so much pain the pain meds are not even touching it um there's nothing we can do so they said they just said can you get here as quickly as possible so you can be with her or say goodbye or whatever because we have to put we have to put her out of her misery we can't do I can't ethically can't leave her like this so Phil literally was like Neow! found the nearest lay by quickly turned around we had there was roadworks we had to go around a huge ridiculous diversion um they rang me again and they were like are you nearly here and i was like road the road works and she was like oh no i didn't realize that you would be affected by that i'm so sorry so we were five minutes away by that point i got there went in they talked me through what happened that day and just to explain why they were saying this is it we've got to put her to sleep and i was like yeah I totally agree. I felt this morning that this was going to happen and I've prepared my children for it. My husband and I prepared for it. Um, yeah. So they gave me a form to sign saying that I consented to being euthanized. And, um, I was talking about how my children were in the car and how Bessie is, was really, really close to her and that they were best friends. And, um, and she said, would she like to come in and say goodbye? And I was like, yeah, she really would um and I she said we can't we're not really supposed to let them in and I was like if it can just be Bessie that would be great so they said yeah okay that's fine so I went out and got Bessie Bessie did not understand what was happening which was heartbreaking she was like oh is she okay we're gonna get bring her home tomorrow and I was like yeah. I was like let's just go see her give her some loving tell her she's a good pony give her kisses and she was giving her hugs and kisses and oh, you're such a good pony I love you so much and making a big fuss of her and Chanty, who had obviously been quite uncomfortable, immediately calmed down when Bessie arrived and, um, and was obviously comforted by her presence, which was really special and very emotional at the time. I'm getting emotional now, thinking about it. Um, and then I took Bessie out and Bessie said, she looks so much better than she did this morning. Are we going to pick her up and bring her home tomorrow? And I just went, she's definitely, she's got lots, she's had lots of medicine. So I took her into the car and I and I whispered to Phil, she has no idea what she's just done. She thinks we're taking her home tomorrow. Sorry. And um, I said, I need you to, to deal with that. And Phil said, yeah, I'll talk to her. You go. So I walked back into the barn and I heard this primal, like guttural scream, like a wounded a wounded animal and I was like she's it's just sunk in he's told her and it's just sunk in and that's the sound of a seven-year-old little girl's heart breaking it was awful it was the worst noise I've ever heard in my life <laughs> and um, I went back in and they gave us some more sedation and more pain relief she was still really uncomfortable and um and I sat with her and I was stroking her back and scratching her bum and telling her all the people that love her me my husband my children my sharer who looked after her with me my my dear friend Noni and our field sharer Pam who looked after her as well and all of the other people who have whose lives she's touched and um that cared about her I was telling her, Mama loves you, and Dada loves you, and Chelsea loves you, and I was listing off everyone. So the last thing she heard as she was, um, as she fell asleep for the last time was me, my voice, telling her, everyone who loves her, and her having a bum scratch, which was 
beautiful and as she fell as she stopped breathing I I was watching I was watching her take her watching her take her last breaths and um, then the veterinary nurse and the vet moved away and I just burst into tears as you can imagine and um, yeah it was really emotional it was awful I felt like someone had ripped ripped part of me off my body um, my horses are my passion they are my my life if everything else was lost I would still have my horses and um, yeah it was horrible and um, I brushed her mane and the vet brushed her tail and as a thing if you're not horsey you won't know this but if you are you'll know um, when a horse dies we have a bit of a tradition in the horse world where we cut off parts of their tail <laughs> sounds a bit weird um, and we keep hold of it and um, I had a beautiful horse made um, of Obi, who was our cob last year. I'm just going to get it and show you. So, yeah, I had a beautiful horse made, um, Oberon Story, that was his name, Obi, um, by a company called Groverly Wood Toys. Um, they're local to me in, um, in Hampshire, they're local to Hampshire. And um, they took some of his mane and tail, took some of his mane, sorry, and made this beautiful horse. Um, so this is his real mane, this was Obi's mane and it's been fashioned into a mane and tail and all of these markings that are on him are exactly the same, done from photographs um, as, um, so they, it looks exactly like him as, is, as a wooden horse. It's actually a toy, it's meant to be a toy, it's um, CE tested so it can be used as a toy but um, I don't let anyone play with it, it's mine, this is um, my way of keeping, have, having him close and um i'd have a whole i'd have like the whole like wooden stable and have these in there just to like kind of play with myself i guess but to have horses because yeah very special to me so that's my my ob so, uh, we, have, um, we have this is a lock of chanty's mane and i'm gonna send that off to the same company and get a smaller version a little shetland pony made um to live with obi on a shelf i have my shelf up there I've got lots of knickknacks of ornaments that were belong to my grandmother and my grandfather who um, have now passed on as well so they all kind of stay up there and I'm gonna have my little chanty pony um, so I've got some tail and I've got some mane and I'm then gonna they're gonna turn that into a little horse for me which is um, yeah it's gonna be lovely um, so I'm sorry to turn this into a bit of a, a bummer mess, um, uh, thingy but you know it's kind of a uh, just a little update, um, I dropped an update and a vlog, so thank you for bearing with me as always um, through these ups and downs. <laughs> and um, I am thinking of doing more horse content um, aimed at children, so um, if you, your children, and like from a home education perspective, so um, videos that teach children about horses. Um, I know that horse riding is a uh, is not something that's accessible to a lot of people, um, to most people, and um, but still children are really really interested in horses so I'm considering um, a series of videos, um, like an ongoing thing called Ponyology where we learn all about, where I learn all about horses and it's those videos will be aimed at children. Um, I'm thinking about doing it on a, on a separate channel called Ponyology, um, but uh, and I have, that is a thing now, if you search um, Ponyology, you will find it. So um, I'm just kind of working at what those videos are going to be, and they'll probably just be once a week. Um, they'll include virtual rides, so I'll take a hat cam out and film my ride. Um, they will be edited, so if I accidentally swear <laughs> in the video, because that occasionally happens, if I get into a bit of a hairy situation, and they'll be edited, so they'll be child-friendly. Um, uh, like those they will be bleeped out there won't be any bleeps it'll just i'll just cut the sound in that point so you won't even hear you obviously won't see my mouth move because you won't see me at all you just see through the horse's ears um but yeah and like different things i'm gonna get up to with the horses and things like that just for you know aimed at family videos but they will be listed as made for kids so children can enjoy them and we'll talk all about horses and um how to take care of them and things like that and they might have the children riding and things like that in the future as well so um if you guys are interested as interested in that check out ponyology um, i put a link to the channel in the description um 
and end up there if you're interested in checking it out and if you um there's no videos on it at the moment but there will be in the future so uh watch that space um yeah thank you so much for listening to me uh it was a bit like therapy having a little chat with you about this and um yeah nothing's really happening with the adoption right now so like from a my, me perspective so just throwing myself into life and uh, waiting and waiting <laughs> i will see you guys on monday uh, and uh, thank you so much for listening don't forget to like and subscribe if you like to hear me ramble and um, i will speak to you soon bye